more revolutionary quarterback? Is it Mahomes or Lamar? This is tough. I'm going to say Lamar because of how the fact that when he came, before he even stepped foot on an NFL field, the man was told, you shouldn't even be in this position. Mm -hmm. You should be a running back. Why wouldn't Lamar? I remember standing at the combine in front, of, in front of him at the podium, and people were literally asking him, do you think you'd be better off as a running back? And I think when you watch Lamar, every step of his journey, despite being on the precipice of winning a second MVP, the, the, the doubts about him, the criticisms, anonymous sources saying, oh, people have figured out Lamar, um, defenses have figured him out, and I'm still waiting to see what exactly it is that they've figured out. Um, I think Lamar is just, he's a different cat, and I understand Patrick is special, and he could go down as one of the greatest of all time, but when I think of Lamar's journey and what the expectation of his was, despite Heisman Trophy winner, but despite all of that coming into the NFL, and people still thinking he's not good enough, and now kids watching Lamar, you know, watching how he plays, understanding that I don't have to necessarily fit the mold, I could be different. I think Lamar is revolutionary from the standpoint of not just on a football field, but what he means beyond the game and within the city of Baltimore and beyond. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone knows where I stand in relation to like the importance for Lamar. I talked about that last week and, and how he's very aware. The answer is uh, Patrick. A um, couple reasons. Patrick has gotten us to like take great quarterbacks and be like, man, are they good enough? Because we, this past weekend's game, the AFC Championship game, Josh Allen plays remarkable, and a lot of the conversation this week is like, ah, you know, did he do enough? Is he good enough? Can he actually win when it matters the most? And every 0 and 3 versus Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. He Patrick Mahomes is that good. I say this all the time. I blame him for so much of the stuff that happens in the NFL nowadays. You know, again, we have conversations about remarkable quarterbacks that have some of the best performances that we've seen, and certainly in recent memory, and go, ah, I don't know if this guy is good enough because he can't be Patrick Mahomes. We're having a conversation. We just watched two years ago Tom Brady win his last Super Bowl, and it's the greatest like quarterback run ever. And I don't even know if it's close when it comes to career accomplishment. And we already are saying, well, this guy might be better. And we have, he, he's one of those quarterbacks that we, we sit there and say defies logic. He does things you should not do. I'll go back to when he was early in his career and throwing the ball across the field to Tyree Kill versus the Baltimore Ravens. Every quarterback that does that, you always get taught, don't do that. And I was like, well, maybe dude, if you watch, if you know anybody that has a young son that's very talented, you're taking them to quarterback trainers, and quarterback trainers now are completely training guys differently because of Patrick Mahomes. They're training guys to make those athletic, funny body, off balance, ridiculous throws because of Patrick Mahomes. We blame quarterbacks that aren't good enough because of Patrick Mahomes. Think about some of the guys that got drafted since him. Um, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray. Anthony Richardson, these, these guys, while are remarkably talented, they're getting drafted because everyone has to ask the question, or at least drafted where they are. If we got to play Patrick Holmes at 15, are we good enough at quarterback? And more often than not, the answer is like, the only chance we have is we, if we have a freakazoid like that. Now, Lamar is not far off in that, of course. But Patrick's revolutionized so much of like the conversation around quarterback play. Well, to me, the answer here is Patrick Mahomes. And before I go any further, let me put this in its proper perspective. When you bring up Patrick Mahomes, Dio, it enticed me to go back and look at the 2017 NFL draft okay. when Patrick Mahomes was taken 10th. Yeah. Now, the only other quarterback in that draft who was drafted before him was Mitchell Trubisky right. by the Chicago Bears. Who, by the way, moved up in the draft, bypassed Deshaun Watson, who was taken 12th, bypassed Patrick Mahomes, who was taken 10th, to draft Mitchell Trubisky. You want to know how bad of a decision that is? The GM at that time was Ryan Pace. Remember, right? Am I right, Kimberly? It was Ryan Pace, right? That yeah. damn decision was so bad, that's probably what held up 
the Chicago Bo the, the Chicago Bears given the GM duty presently to Ryan Poles because his first name was Ryan. They said we don't want that kind of mistake again. That's how bad that damn decision was, okay? The they were holding the fact that his first name was against him. It was a delayed reaction because, my God, when we think about Ryan, we think about the stupidity of making that damn decision. That's how bad that was, okay? We knew that years ago. That's why I bring that up. It's one thing if we looked at Patrick Mahomes now and we said stuff like this. First play in NFL history to win two Super Bowls and two league MVPs in his first six seasons. Okay. AFC Championship games. He's 3-2 three and two with 303 passing yards. 14th average, by the way. 14 touchdown passes. Two interceptions. You're talking about this guy. Mahomes, first quarterback in NFL history with zero turnovers and zero times sacked in three straight games. This is what this brother does. This is what he brings to the table. And when you look at the level of greatness that he has exercised, a 13-3 and record in the postseason since he's arrived on the scene, averaging 285 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, seven interceptions, a 106 passer rating, and we see no-look passes. We see across-the-field passes. We see him scampering down sidelines and running whenever he has to. We see the poise under pressure. It doesn't matter. He seems unflappable. He seems unshakable. By the way, one more stat. Mahomes' career, 39-11 and 11 road record, including the playoffs, is the best in NFL history with a minimum of 50 road starts. Joe Montana ranks second on that list. Tom Brady ranks fourth on that list. I get the fact that Lamar Jackson is all-world, Kimberly. He's mercurial. He's sensational. He's a former league MVP. He's got my vote for the, to win the MVP again this year. I'm rooting for him to win the Super Bowl championship. I actually, as much as I love me some Patrick Mahomes, I actually would love to see Lamar Jackson win. Do you feel better or worse? <laughs> I mean, it's facts, right? Uh, do you feel better or worse about the Eagles now? Who, me? Uh, no, Kimberly oh. A. Martin. No, the okay. person in your chair. Yeah. Um, I actually feel worse listening to the Sirianni quotes because it almost reminded me of Mike McCarthy's presser where he was pretty much like, we have a championship culture here. And <laughs> yeah. it was like, since when? Yeah. And it's like, b just believe in us. Yeah. Okay. It's like, actually, you have a wild card round. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Why? Um, I think when I watched Sirianni, <sighs> there weren't a lot of answers. And the biggest question was, what happened over the final two months of the season? Why did a team that was 10 and one suddenly, it looked like they just disintegrated. And it's not that they, they didn't play hard, but you just waited for the Eagles to sort of right the ship and it never happened. And when Sirianni says in his presser, the offense just got stale, bro, this is your offense. How how does it get stale? And she said, bruh. <laughs> like, how does it honestly, how does it, how does this is supposed to be your baby? And now I'll take you back before the season started. Sirianni was quoted as saying, listen, this is my offense. I'm very involved. This doesn't matter if Howie Roseman's calling this offense. It doesn't matter if Kevin Petula's calling this offense, Brian Johnson. Like, I'm very involved and this is my offense. Well, what happened to your offense that you say, sir, got stale? Also, he essentially was asked in the presser. What is it that you do here? Because we saw the issues on defense, and then we saw the issues on offense, and he talks about the need to get coordinators on both sides that can sort of infuse what we're used to seeing from the Eagles. The fact that the head coach was essentially asked, tell us again what your responsibilities will be, being that you're placing so much on your coordinators. Listen, before the season started, everybody talked about, you know what, the Eagles, they're going to be good. Yeah, okay, yeah, they lost their two coordinators, but, you know, Nick Sirianni, he's got this. It really doesn't matter. Well, clearly it did matter, and it happened under Sirianni's watch, and Sirianni didn't provide specifics on why it fell apart and how he can reprove himself. All he talked about was the importance of the coordinators he's got to hire. Well, I must confess, Kimberly, uh, I'm kind of disappointed I in your answer. confess. I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a, don't sing, don't sing, don't dance, don't sing. Stop. Here's the deal. Sure Kimberly, I'm disappointed in your answer because um, you're a big-time journalist. That is true. You care, you care about truth. So I have a problem with the truth. Clearly, the man didn't know what the hell he was doing this year. Once well, he lost his coordinators. Why, again, I feel confident about what they're going to do? 
because now that those co that's been exposed. I love the fact that the reporters were up there going like this. Uh, exactly what it is that you do. <laughs> Could you tell us, please? Could you tell us? Because we don't know. Steichen gone. You know, he becomes the head coach of the Colts. All right, suddenly your offense goes kaput. Defensively, Jonathan Gannon's gone. He goes to Arizona. Defensively, y'all fade. Even your pass rush faded as the season waned after that 10-1 and one start. You've got age everywhere, some attrition. Your secondary softer. Bodies need to be replaced. We know what you were when you had your coordinators. And we've seen what you are when they were gone. And I love the fact that Sirianni brought up Jeffrey Lurie. Now, you like to sit up there and you don't hesitate. You know, you got to go to Detroit. You'll let us know. You got to go to Detroit. You in Baltimore? You, you got to go to Baltimore. Well, I was in Philly for you 17 years. I, I, I kind of know. I, I, I kind of know Jeffrey Lurie a little bit. You know what I'm We go back a long ways. And let me tell you something right now. When those camera shots show, and this is why, and, 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 let, me, and let me say this to y'all. This is the difference, Dan Olavsky, between a team like the Eagles and a team like the Cowboys. Cowboys are getting blitzed. Jerry Jones. And that's all you got. <laughs> Jeffrey Lurie, Jeffrey Lurie and the Eagles, they're losing and the camera goes, and the wife is right next to him, and he's like this. <laughs> because that's what winners are like. When they quiet down, they get silent, and it's like they're lurking, they're coming. That's why Sirianni brought his name up. You notice, look at the departure. So you got the coordinators that left after last season, right? This, 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 since, since they lost, Ben Johnson gone. Desai gone. Senior defensive assistant and play caller, Matt Patricia, gone. Sirianni knows they ain't playing. His job is on the line. Yeah. That's what I heard yesterday, and I don't mind. So that's why you feel better about yes. the Eagles? Okay. Yes, accountability. Okay. Accountability. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Can you do the Stephen A. again? Hey. I just need to see it one more time. I do hey. the Monica McNutt. <laughs> they sign it. <laughs> <laughs> sign it like the G in lasagna. You're wasting your time not answering the question, Dio. Yeah, we Dan, got let's we, go. Let's roll. We're no, we trying no, to pay bills here. I, I feel better about it. 50% better because they're going to get Vic Fangio as their defensive coordinator. Yes. Yes. Vic is really good. They got to get more personnel in the back. Vic, what are you making that face for? I, I would have liked to have seen a better job from Vic, Vic, Vic Fangio of Miami. That's why I'm making that face. Bro, they were like one of the best defenses in football. Uh, stop. Yeah, it they didn't look like that yeah. the last several weeks. Not to me. No. Everyone got hurt. No. Um, I want to see who the offensive coordinator is before sitting here going, no questions asked feel a lot better. I, I think yeah. Eric Bieniemy, Liam Cohen, Jared Johnson, T. Martin, somebody's got to go there that we could, like, get reinvigorated with offensive-wise.